Okay, vertical structure of the atmosphere. First, we have to know what atmospheric pressure is. And basically, that's the weight of the air above. Right? So you guys are all very strong. Right? At least I like to think about myself like this. I'm very strong because I can walk around on Earth like it's no big deal. Right? The weight of the air, even though there actually is a tremendous weight of the air pushing down on you, I can hold that up and walk through it without much effort. Right? That's how strong you are. Because 50% of the air is below 6 kilometers, or 3.5 miles. Right? So 3.5 miles, 6 kilometers, half of the weight of the air is there. Half of all of the air is there. Now, 90% of the air is below 10 miles, or 16 kilometers. Right? So you can see this little picture down here where you have the 10. Now that's 10 kilometers, right? And the Boeing, the airplane, blah, 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 the airplane is flying just above that, right? So it's actually flying above most of the air. This is why planes are pressurized, because it's above the air. Okay. Vertical structure, here we go. Four layers all based on temperature, okay? The first one, we always go bottom up. Okay, so the first one is the troposphere, bottom layer, okay? This is the layer where we live. This is the layer next to the surface of the ground, okay? This is interesting because this is where all the weather is. So sometimes it's called the weather sphere. Sometimes it's called the mixing zone because what happens to air on the ground? It mixes. And if it didn't mix, well, we basically wouldn't have this course, right? So the troposphere is also called the weather sphere or the mixing zone. And trope in Latin actually means to mix. So there's kind of the way you can remember which one it is. Okay? Learn Latin? No, just learn a couple words in Latin or root words, right? I don't know Latin either. What's interesting with the troposphere, sorry, troposphere, is that as you go up in the troposphere, the temperature drops. Okay? And you can see here it says environmental lapse rate 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer. Right. Basically, that means it goes down, so if it goes down six and a half degrees for every kilometer you go up. Okay, so as you go up, it gets colder. And we'll talk about this later, but yes, as you go up, it gets colder. So here, we don't really need to worry about that because Florida is oh, flat, right? So we don't really need to worry about going up in the atmosphere or up in elevation. However, if you're somewhere like Washington, where it has all those, not D.C., but Washington State, where it has all those Rockies and lovely, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous mountains, you have to worry about that, okay? After the troposphere comes the tropopause. This is basically the boundary, so all the boundaries are going to be called pauses, right? You can see tropopause, and you can see their stratopause, right? So those are basically the boundaries. Troposphere and with the tropopause. Next is the stratosphere. And this one has the ozone layer, right? We just finished talking about the ozone layer and how great the ozone is, right? And so this is the where the ozone layer can be found. Easy way to remember this, strata means bed or layer, and so ozone layer is in the layer sphere, right? The stratosphere. Then you have the strata pods, which is basically the boundary, right? So a troposphere, Triple pause, stratosphere, stratus pause. Now, next is the mesosphere. That's about it. I mean, the only remarkable thing about this is that it has the coldest temperatures. Okay. And then the mesopause, right? The boundary. Now you have the thermosphere. Now, this one is really kind of fun. Because this guy has the highest temperature. Mesosphere, coldest. Thermosphere, hottest temperature. Highest temperature. Okay. But it doesn't feel hot. Because temperature is a measure of the molecules, how fast they are vibrating. And heat is the transfer of that, right? So temperature that molecules up there are going to be vibrating, 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 vibrating really fast, right? However, if I were to take you up there and drop you there, the likelihood that you would get 
burnt or feel hot is very, 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 very low. Because there's so few molecules in that layer that you probably wouldn't come into contact with one. So you would think it was cold, even though technically it has the highest temperature. So thermosphere, highest thermo, highest temperature, get it? Right, it's kind of a fun one. I mean, other than the troposphere, it's kind of a fun one. And then there's the, you thought I was gonna say thermopause, didn't you? Yeah, we don't really know where the thermosphere ends, so we can't define a thermopause. Okay. Next is the ionosphere. Now, if you look at the picture, it says exosphere. Either one, I don't really care, okay? The ionosphere and or exosphere is actually, that name is great. Ionosphere for charged ions. That's the only thing that's there. Random ions, right? Or exosphere with like the beginning of space kind of. Like there's almost nothing there. There's a few charged ions. That's it, right? This has no impact on us whatsoever. However, this is where your northern and southern lights come into play. What happens is the sun is trying to kill us with all these things that it throws at us and the em field pulls that into the north pole or yeah the em pole and that's where all those particles interact with our ionosphere or atmosphere and you get the lovely glow 